Hello, my name is Stuart Herbert and this is one of a series of videos I'm making showing how I've set Sublime Text 2 up for PHP development and in this video I want to show you the PHP unit plugin that's available for Sublime Text 2 this is uh, one of the plugins that I've written for Sublime Text 2 and it allows you to run your unit tests from inside Sublime Text 2 and it's got a couple of little features in as well to make it nice and quick to work with your unit tests as well. Like all of the um, packages that I've been showing you, it's available via the package control mechanism for Sublime Text 2. So if you go to the page of community packages and type PHP unit, there you go, you can see it there, and you install it via package control as normal and then you're ready to go. Now, I know it's obvious, but I just want to make it absolutely clear. So the PHP unit plugin only works on PHP code. So here's an example, here's a piece of Python I've written. This actually is the PHP unit plugin itself. If you're curious to see what it looks like. And if I right click in here, although there is a PHP unit option in the menu, if we move down to it, you'll see that it says that the plugin doesn't support Python buffers. And if I move the mouse down here bottom right, you can see the syntax for this buffer is Python. So the PHP unit plugin is only available for PHP code. Now to use it, you have to have a PHP unit.xml file. Here's one I've created earlier. You can see it highlighted on the left hand side if I move the mouse down here. And the reason for this is that the default command line um, runner, the text runner as it's called for PHP unit, hasn't changed a lot over the years. And it really needs you to set up a config file to give it some hints as to what you're trying to achieve to be, actually, to be any use, to be honest. Um, so you need a test suite section really to tell PHP unit where to find your code. And this one's also got a filter section in, which um, is that's for helping with code completion, the code coverage, sorry, tools to tell it which files to look in and which to ignore. And then there's all the different output files that are created for understanding how the code coverage went and some metrics to import into things like Jenkins. If you're using my fix tool, to create PHP components, you get all this for free. I believe Symfony, their standard scaffolding sets this up for you as well. I'm not a Symfony developer myself, but that's what I believe. And if not, you're welcome to crib this one and use it in your own project. Now the file can be called two things. So you can call it phpunit.xml, or if you prefer, you can call it phpunit.xml.dist. Um, the plugin supports both conventions just fine and it will use the dist file if it exists and it can't find a php unit.xml file. The idea is the php unit.xml file is meant to be an override of the .dist file. That's the convention and it's a good one to follow. So inside the php unit.xml file if we right click in here php unit we can run our tests using this particular config file. Off we go, run the tests, you'll see a panel opens up and it's gone and run all the tests in my particular project. And if we just scroll this panel up, oh by the way, this panel is resizable and on a decent 24-27 uh, inch monitor there's plenty of space. Um, don't worry about how small this looks here, that's just because this is a, a recording for uploading to YouTube but you can see it tells you exactly where it was run and the command line used. So it's all the information you need to reproduce the testing. And if you right click on phpunit.xml in the sidebar, you can also get a menu here to run PHP unit using that XML file. Convenience, that's the whole point of this. Let's close that for the moment. So here's a class called contract that I've built earlier and I've also built some tests for it. So let's open up those tests, php unit, open test class. 
bang, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we can see my test file that I've written earlier. And if I want to go back to the file being tested, back we go, and you can see it's just switched tabs, it hasn't opened a new tab, there's no need to. Let's close this. Now if I put this into two column view like this, and I say I want to open the test file, it'll put the test file in the other column, which is very handy. And the same happens vice versa, if I close the original code, switch over here, PHP unit, open class being tested, puts it in the other column. Very easy, very good for test driven development. You can have your tests and your code open side by side. Very handy. Let's make a bit more space for today. There we go. And now, if I want, I can run these tests or I can run all the tests just from in here. So I'm just going to run these tests, which is what you'd normally do while you're developing a class. You just want to run the tests over and over as part of test driven development. Make sure your tests are working, your class is working. Up pops the panel. Let's run just those tests. And again, you can see the folder it's run it in. And you can see a list of the command line parameters used to run this. So everything, all the information you need to do the testing yourself on the command lines there, it's all reproducible. <coughs> And that's pretty much all that it does for you. It's very simple. Allows you to work on unit tests and test driven development very, very quickly. Now it can do a bit more. So let's create a new file. Let's set this to PHP syntax. There we go. So imagine I'm creating a new test from file from scratch. Now we, we ship some snippets as well to help. So if you do PHP unit minus test case, hit tab. There you go, you get a nice empty test case to work with. A pretty standard framework. And we can just change the name here, call it that for argument's sake. Now imagine you're writing some tests, so you do php unit dash test, hit tab, and you get a skeleton test method. And you get some guidance as to how to structure your test. There are many different methodologies for writing unit tests, and most of them work, but one I strongly recommend is making your tests as readable as possible by separating them into three sections. Setting up your tests, so that's creating, that's doing all your setup works, creating any objects you need, creating any test data, and making and any assertions you need to do to make sure your test conditions are, your pre-test conditions are met. Then perform your change and then do your assertions afterwards to make sure that whatever change you did here actually did anything. With this, it's very, very easy on a single day to get through 1,000 lines of code and unit test it 100% code coverage. Because these little snippets, the time they save really adds up. And the fact, I'm just going to close this, we don't need this anymore, close out saving. The fact you can go backwards and forwards between the two files as you're working on stuff, backwards and forwards, bang, 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 bang. In fact, you can run these tests, you can run the whole project's tests as well. It makes a huge difference. It all happens in Sublime Text 2, it's all really quick. And testing takes no time at all. No time at all. It's so it's so effortless. It's the only way I can describe it. Apologise if I sound a bit too much on evangelising for unit testing, but I believe it makes a huge difference to code quality if you've got good unit tests. I also believe it makes a difference if your code's testable. I think that also helps quality a lot. Right. Now, to finish, there's a couple of things I want to show you 
regarding how the PHP unit plugin finds your test code. So you'll notice here that my class called contract is in a namespace PHP sorry fixed project slash contract live. So when I hit the right mouse menu, it right context menu in real time, it does a search of your project and it's looking for the test code. If I open the test code, you'll see here it's got exactly the same namespace. In fact, let's do these side by side so it's even easier to see. Let's move this to there. So you can see here it's the same namespace and it's the same class name with test appended upon the end. That's what it looks for by default. That's its um, default search. But not everybody uses that convention. I'll give you an example. Let's switch down here to the Composer project. Composer is an up and coming alternative to the pair installer, which is uh, currently under development and is starting to gain some real traction. And it's got pretty good code coverage, it has to be said. But they do a few things a little different. So if we go to their installation manager, there we go. You can see here this class is installation manager inside the composer installer. But if we open their test code, you'll see the namespace is different, it's composer test installer follows the same convention for the class name but it's in a different namespace and the PHP unit plugin if it can't find the matching class name in the same namespace we'll look for the matching class name in any namespace to give more flexibility for these type of projects and find the PHP unit.xml file here we go if we show that in the sidebar, you'll see it's picked up the php.xml.dist correctly. Very good, very important. Now, that's coping with that approach. And another example here is the Symphony scaffolding. This is the Symphony standard scaffolding that you can download from GitHub to use to get started on a Symphony 2 project. And under here, what they've done, its source and tests are all intertwined. So here's their here's their demo controller test code, and it's in a Acme demo bundle. So that's the vendor, that's the package name, and then it's test controller. But if we open the code being tested we can see that this is an Acme demo bundle controller, a different convention again. The PHP unit plugin coats with all of this just fine. Now if we go and find the PHP unit.xml file and show that in the sidebar you'll see that this is in a subfolder off to the side. It's not above, directly above the source code and so we've had to teach the PHP unit plugin to look not just directly above the code but also look to the side of the code as well in order to find that file. Remember every time you right click it's doing a real time search for the files it needs for that right context menu to work. But that's the PHP unit plugin and I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching.